Hey, folks, how's it going? We're checking out more Knowing Me, Knowing You. Hopefully, you guys have a fantastic day. Dude, what a fantastic start to the series, man. That was a train wreck of a first episode. It was amazing. And a train wreck in a good way, man. He just was such a terrible host. He was rude to the lady who rode the horses. I forget her name. It was fantastic. I know you guys said the whole horse thing pooping was unplanned. I assume that was the case, I, I, but I didn't state it. Because I'm like, how do you like make a horse like poop on cue? You know what I mean? I mean, I guess they could have had like a bag next to it and made it drop out, but I assumed it was real poo, and it just happened by accident, and they just rolled with it. That's what I thought happened. Well, I wasn't sure, and I forgot to mention at the end, but somebody said something at the comment in the comment section that that wasn't planned. It was a comment or a message, a message to me. I don't know. My memory's trash. I've said that before. But, yeah, when I saw it, I was like, there's no way. Like, there's no way they planned it else, but it was great, man. And it was distracting the whole time because you just saw the shot. <laughs> you just saw the poo in the shot the entire time, dude. Uh, he kept on, like, rolling back to it, like, commenting back on it. But that was a train wreck, dude. He did such a terrible job. And he bringing that dude's kid on there and didn't even let him know. And then the guy didn't even know the kid's birthday, which just made him look even worse. Uh, planning a wait, Disneyland vacation on the week that he had custody of the kid. Well, the weekend he had custody of the kid. Oh, dude. Just all around, man. That was fantastic. I thought it was a great start to the whole shebang, man. And just Alan being typical Alan. It was good. Really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to this episode. So let's just go and jump into it. We'll talk about it more at the end. Welcome. Welcome to... Welcome to Very <laughs> so Me Knowing You with me, Alan Partridge. It's a chat show, Jim, but not as we know it. <laughs> well, well, it's official. This show is a smash hit sensation. A corking copper-bottomed hit. Those aren't my words. They are the words of Mike Taylor from TV Quick. <laughs> of course, of course, there have been one or two dissenting voices. The Clever Clog Papers, Independent, Telegraph, Guardian, Observer, Mail on Sunday. They've been a bit sniffy. There's one a lot of places. One in particular caught my eye. Philip Parsons in The Times called this show Moribund. Well, I looked up Moribund in my dictionary. I was like, what does that mean? it said Moribund, adjective meaning about to die or dying. <laughs> Please welcome the new agony aunts from Playboy magazine. Stay tuned. The very lovely Daniela Forrest. Isn't, isn't she lovely? <laughs> eh? Yes. Phew, <laughs> phew. Okay, whistle. And then we've got knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Daniela Forrest. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Can we do that? Just do the kiss quickly. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, he looks good. Where do you want to kiss me, Alan? Peachy cheek or little round mouth? Little round mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Stand up. You going to kneel down? Yes. Right down. Yes. Right. Now, Daniela Forrest, you are Playboy's agony aunt. Your autobiography is published by Jones. Never heard of them. Um, <laughs> what What comes across very strongly is your understanding of male psychology. I think I understand men because I adore them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and what, as a woman, yeah, you do. do you look for in a man? Power, sensitivity, mm. <laughs> sense of humor. Stop adjusting yourself, man. I like a man who knows who he is. I'm Alan Partridge, can I? Kids, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the most important thing that I look for in a man is a fit young body like a Greek god. Right. Take <laughs> him um, out. That's it. Now, you also uh, help people with their sexual problems. Let me give you a hypothetical problem. <laughs> um, yeah, not hypothetical. There's, there's a couple. They've never slept, neither of them have ever slept with anyone else. And he's frustrated? Yes, deeply, deeply. <laughs> but that's, that's only part of the problem. The real problem is that their, their sex life is, well, for want of a better word, moribund. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they need to explore their sex lives if they're not working, you know. Some people, they find it very sexy to be watched. <laughs> not by the dog, I mean... <laughs> Montgomery was frightened, he was just barking. <laughs> this dude is bubby. Who's Montgomery? You give yourself away, buddy. The man who masterminded the Battle of El Alamein. <laughs> um, and, and the name of this hypothetical dog. Have you got a dog, Alan? Yes. And what's his name? Rommel. <laughs> <laughs> Once 
once again, here is a man shying away from mm. discussing sex. When I was a man, I used to have the same problem, but as a woman, I find that oh. I am <laughs> How's he going to react to that? Well, I'm very pleased for you. Now, so hang on a minute. Who, who, <laughs> who, who was a man? When I was a man. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Who did you think Daniel was in the photographs? I, th I thought that was your twin brother. I was Daniel. I used to be a man. <laughs> the good face. I can't believe you didn't know. I kissed you. <laughs> Why did you invite me on your show? Dude. I thought you were sexy. I don't now. You're a bloke. Have I got my to knock your block off? <laughs> I'm a woman. I have breasts. Oh, God. You should be in a circus. Dude. Oh no, dude, stop. You'd be in the front row. Yeah, that's Dale. There he goes, I should say. Dale cold blooded. No. No, no, no. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? Uh huh. <laughs> On your way. I knew there was something dodgy about you. Nah, you hands liked it. You've you got great big flapping hands like a bloke. <laughs> you could be a goalkeeper. <laughs> Glenn, did you know it was a man? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Debonair, did you know it was a man? Yes. Yeah, yeah, everyone knew, apart from old Muggins Partridge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Forrest. Dan the man, Forrest. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, she's a woman now, man. This overreacted. It's, uh, it's time now for a new regular <laughs> feature of the series called Knowing Me, Alan Partridge, Knowing You, yeah. Another Alan Partridge. Well, I'm going to present you with this now. It's the Alan Partridge tie and Oh, that was a big one. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Alan Partridge tie and blazer badge. Thanks for things so much worse. There, there we go. You, you take that. Thank man. you. That right. Uh, right. Hey, I'll put the tie on if I can keep my head still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I can laugh. Of humor, huh? what, a, what, a, what, a, what a triumph for the human spirit. Alan Partridge, marvelous. Yeah, come on, go. Go, go. Hey, please uh, leave. Right. Right. Chance yeah. of an yeah, Go, go. Go. <laughs> go. Last night, I met a man who quite literally changed my life. The dance of Diabolos. <laughs> He's not the crazy guy from Max and Patty, is he? In like the last episode of Max and Patty, the crazy friend. The forces turn upon their axes. The summoning the of the time. spirits of Talamachus. <laughs> He's checking her out. Marvellous, marvellous. Um, Tina, I'll see you later for the Wheel of Death. Um, off you go. Very nice. <laughs> now that is a woman. Oh no. <laughs> Tony, Tony Lamesma. <laughs> is that a good show? <laughs> You're a bloke. Alan, when I click my fingers again, we will be in your car on the way to High Wycombe. Let's take about 15, 20 minutes, that's all. Can we just pull over now and make love in a no. lay-by, please, I, Alan? I, I can't stop on the motorway. That's the hard shoulder. It's illegal. No, but, Alan, I'm, I'm begging you, please. Ursula, it's an offence to stop on the hard <laughs> shoulder unless there's a malfunction with the car. <laughs> Alan, Come on, I'm taking man. my top off, please. Look, no, if I get caught in flagrante whilst violating the highway code, <laughs> my wife will find out, I'll get three points on my licence, my insurance bill could go up by 30%. That's not going to happen. Now... Put your top on and get out. <laughs> get out. Get out. Wake up. He drew the light. It'll take a few seconds before I'm totally, totally it's hypnotized. It's all over, Alan. You, you've hypnotized Yes, all, ha all finished. That's well, crazy. Well, I hope you weren't <laughs> too foolish. No. <laughs> of course I didn't, Alan. Well, um, they Tony, do like we'll a freaking maniac. for the Wheel of Death. Um, it simply remains for me to say thank you very much, Tony Lamesma. Hopefully I didn't look too foolish. <laughs> It says it, it says it, you, you also threw Whoopi Goldberg's copper kettle at a cat. No, no, other way round. <laughs> threw a cat at a copper you kettle? threw a cat at Whoopi Goldberg's copper kettle? No, no, I threw a copper kettle at Whoopi Goldberg's cat. That's what I said. No, you said I threw Whoopi Goldberg's copper kettle at a cat. 
I didn't. I threw a copper kettle at Whoopi Goldberg's cat. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Whoopi Goldberg's copper kettle. Right. It was Whoopi Goldberg's cat. So whose copper kettle was it? It doesn't matter. Angela Lainsbury. Um, Tanya, has he, uh, has he ever thrown a copper kettle at you? No, no, it's one of the few things he's never thrown at me. Really? A joke. Right. <laughs> Tanya's breasts. Now, sorry, that's just my notes. Sorry. Um, sorry. Do well, I'm glad you value my acting so highly. I do. Your name attached to a film is a, is a seal of quality. It's a, it's a guarantee that says, come along, see the film, lads. You won't go home empty-handed. So just... <laughs> <laughs> come on, bro, this side, then jack it off. <laughs> I really think that my films are more than just titillation. This dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can only suggest that uh, if you wish to go and see Tanya's unexpurgated adult breast show, that, uh, that you pop down you to the her off. or um, or marry her. <laughs> That's no guarantee. Damn. Look what I just uncovered. Gary, Tanya tipped us off about this. I believe you used to be a mobile office equipment maintenance engineer. Yeah, briefly. Well, three years. Yeah, got a sack. No, you're lying. You were awarded Mobile Office Equipment Maintenance Engineer of the Month. Well done. Dang. I've actually got a, a broken photocopier at my office in Norwich. Um, do you think you could fix that? You think I'm going to go to Norwich to mend your photocopier? There's no need because Mohammed. <laughs> did he bring it here? Has, Mohammed has moved the mountain to you. This is terrible. Gary. Gary, we've got the photocopier. Will you rise to Alan's challenge and mend it? I Come on, mend it. I don't believe you can mend it. Of course I can mend it. I don't believe you. What model is it? Z... <laughs> Z60. Mono or multi-feed? Mono feed. Easy. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> it is so stupid. Yeah, it hasn't been reset after a paper jam. It's basic. Really? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, every evening as part of my show at the Palladium, which runs until the end of this month, I get a member of the audience up onto the stage and I ask them to overcome their fears. Tonight, Alan will be that person. How do you feel, Alan? Confident. Uh, I am risking my life for chat. Commence spinning the wheel of death. Uh, I've changed my mind. I've changed, I've changed, sorry, I've changed my mind. Drum roll! Please. Sorry, I can... I've changed, we'll do it next week. There isn't time. We'll do it next week! Go on! <laughs> Please! This is madness! Go on, you stupid man! <laughs> Please! Go on! No! It's all right, Philip Park! Four! Time. You're right, the show is moribund! <laughs> we'll do it next week! Knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, freak woman man, knowing you, <laughs> the slut actress and Mr. Floppy the actor, and knowing you, Mr. Looney man with the knives. Good night and aha! And I'm curious why, when he was saying that whatever a person's name, why it seemed like it was like voiced over. I'm going to see if I can find what I was saying. That's um, what, what else have you done? Punched Angela Lane's brain. Yeah, that was nasty. So right there, see how that kind of sounded like it was like it wasn't real? And then when he said Angela Lansbury again, it didn't sound real. Like they re-edited it and added that name in there. Did he say a different name prior to that? Is it just me or does it just not sound real? Like, listen. Punched Angela Lane's brain. Yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> like, it doesn't sound real, right? And the, the other one's the same thing. Is that part of the joke? Is it supposed to not sound real? I don't know. Like, it was re-edited to maybe cover up some type of, like, the joke was too far or something. I don't know. But it sounded weird, and maybe that's, the, that's part of the joke that I'm just not getting. Because I don't know who that is. The Angela Raspberry, or I'm saying the name wrong already. And yeah, this is really fun, man. Especially when he found out that that girl used to be a man. You know, that just the way he freaked out. <laughs> when he really enjoyed that kiss. And everything was trying to show off for her, the whole shebang. When he found out she used to be a man, he was super upset. <laughs> Like this, she used to be, man. It's all right, but and I love how everybody else knew it. They're like, yeah, like what's the big deal, man? <laughs> He's 
only one freaking out. He's like the only one freaking out. Everybody's like, what's the problem? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. It's like when Douglas was freaking out so bad. <laughs> oh, God bless him, dude. I also loved the fact that the woman he would most love to have sex with in the world when he was hypnotized and he was on his way to a hotel to have sex with her and she's like let's pull over and have sex right here he's like no <laughs> he, his, he don't want his insurance rates to go up by 30% and he want to get a ticket that his wife finds out and all this is on. he kicks out of the car <laughs> oh my god oh man Alan's out of control this is fun this is a fantastic episode dude this is great this dude's so out of control it's ridiculous <laughs> Ah, this is ridiculous, man. All around, fantastic. This is a really fun episode. It's always so hard to believe when like shows like this that are just so good. They're clearly fantastic, and they can clearly go on much longer, and they only get a few episodes. Like Brass Eye, that could have went on much longer. And as I said, it's like one of those things. That it it could have been budget, it could have been other stuff. And uh, I know people will have explained reasons why before, but sometimes it blends together when people explain to me why shows get canceled, I kind of forget uh, but it still surprises me when shows are so good and they get canceled after one season. And I know, like, sci-fi fans and Buffy fans, like, kind of stuff, we, we all kind of, like, ride that same thing when we bring a Firefly a lot and people are, like, kind of, like, let it go, man. But, like, well, to me, I really enjoy Firefly and it got canceled after one season. Um, I liked Alphas and Al- Alphas, they were, it was canceled after one season. Don't get me wrong, there are better sci-fis than that, but I really enjoyed Alphas when I was watching it and, like, it got canceled on a cliffhanger, you know? Um, so, I don't know, there's shows that are just really good and then they get canceled, and he's like, why did they get canceled? You know, I saw Alpha so long ago, I can't remember if it, got, if it was canceled on the first season or the second season. I can't remember. But yeah, it's just crazy when shows that are really good and you enjoy it and then they get canceled. Now that's why I have a rule that I use, I don't get into shows until it gets at least uh, three seasons. Unless it has like a name behind it. For example, like House of Dragons. That's different because I watch Game of Thrones. So I know that's going to carry on longer because that's such a, you know, it has name recognition from Game of Thrones and it was around for so long. I don't really see them canceling that show. So something like that I'll get behind early on. Uh, but there's very few shows I get behind early on now because of how I've been burned in the past with shows getting canceled after one or two seasons. So I just I have that three season rule now. This is fantastic, man. I enjoyed this a ton. I, this is This is great. All right, folks, that is it. That is all for this one. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.